What's up, Aries? This is Jesse with 44 Astro. Ooh, right there already. With a new moon tarot reading for um, the new moon coming up on April 8th, which is also a solar eclipse and a super moon. A uh, super new moon just means in its elliptical orbit, it's as close to Earth as it, w as it can get. So it's going to be very powerful. Um, it is going to be a solar eclipse, and solar eclipses are all about the death of light and then the rebirth, right? Because the moon blocks out the light of the sun. It is going to be at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is going to be at 19 degrees Aries, which puts it in the second mansion of the moon. I'll put a picture of the second mansion of the moon up. It's really about confidence. It's not really good for like making new friends and things like this, but it's good for resolving conflict. And conflict is going to probably be the name of the game during this solar eclipse to some extent for all of us. Um, you know, the astrology right now has, or during the uh, new moon, it's going to be, of course, an exact conjunction between the sun and the moon, hence the reason of the eclipse. But also, it's going to be in an exact conjunction with Chiron. Ooh, there's where it wants to stop. So what you need to understand about Chiron is Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron is the rainbow bridge, the gateway between the material existence that we live and then the collective spiritual existence that we're all connected to as well. Its orbit is in between Saturn and Uranus. Saturn is the begin of all individual um, planets for an individual native. Like what, what Saturn on in represents can represent individually as to where, where Uranus out represents is generally the collective on a more powerful scale because they move so much slower. But with that being said, because Chiron is there, he is the wounded healer. So it is likely that the aspect of healing is going to be a big part of uh, this eclipse for each and every one of us, depending on where it falls in our natal charts. So for example, if you're an Aries ascendant, this was your first house or your 12th house. So that's the house of self, your personality, your persona. And then the house, 12th house is the house is a spiritual house, house of loss, house of um, hidden enemies, psychic ability, these types of things. And so what the eclipse really represents is the death of light and then the rebirth of it. It's like the birth and death of Christ, the son of God. So it is the death and the resurrection. In this time of year, spring is about the resurrection. That's why Easter takes place during this time of year. It's when the sun gets back and the weather gets good and stuff starts growing. The rebirth, if the stuff is regrowing, that's what it's all based off of, right? And so with Chiron there, and then the death and the rebirth, you're talking about the end of something and then the growth and manifestation of something new. So it's a really good time for that type of thing. If it's your first house, you could it could be heavily getting your confidence back, getting from being um, passive or um, less confident in the way you live your life and then moving into a new phase where you decide to be more selfish, but not selfish in a, in a negative term, but taking care of yourself more, being more um, pro-self, more confident, willing to help you instead of doing everything for others. It's, it's probably a big aspect of it. Secret enemies may be revealed at this time for, if it's, if it's uh, 12th house for Aries, so you could find out that you had a secret enemy, but it's gonna reach a, it's gonna reach a resolution because that's what this mansion's all about and that's what the death and the rebirth is all about. And with Chiron there, there could be actual physical sickness that some of you discover in yourself. I don't wish that on anybody, but it's possible. Or you find that you did have some kind of ailment and it is healed because that is what Chiron is all about. And it's in an exact conjunction, zero orb. It's going to be at 19 degrees Aries just like the sun and the moon. So it's going to play a prominent role. It's Like I said, it's the rainbow bridge. It's the connection from the mundane physical aspect world, the individuality, to the sacred, expansive, collective, spiritual life that's out there the, the the spiritual experience that we all have it's the rainbow bridge that it connects to it so chiron is very important in that and solar eclipses are believed um if you're like, talking about the tantric traditions like from india that great spiritual growth can happen at an extreme pace during an eclipse so i suggest that if if, if you can you, you're not gonna see this video till probably seventh or sixth or seventh but if you can, Ekadashi, which is fasting, would start three days before the new moon and in three days after. And that is to kind of reset your system. But it's also 
a spiritual activity. So it's also like worshiping or trying to connect your spiritual self because fasting is always associated with um, spiritual practice. It'd be a good time to meditate, especially during the eclipse. It'd be a good time to, because you can go by leaps and bounds during eclipses. The progress can be exponential in a very short amount of time. Anyway, with all that being said, this is a uh, very powerful uh, celestial event that's occurring. There's going to be a lot of healing or a lot of sickness that's going to be kind of involved in this. And then on the world scale, you know, it's everything's in like Aries and Pisces, right? And there's a lot of wars going on in the world right now. And so with the solar eclipse, it's very auspicious energy. We may see either a resolution to a conflict, a healing, or it get much worse. Like the wars in the world may get much worse. More countries get dragged into them. Or we may see some kind of resolution being brought forth. Let's hope it's the resolution because that's kind of what Chiron represents. Anyway, I'm done ranting now. Let me get you your cards. And even if you're just an Aries sun or Aries moon and you're not the ascendant, so it's not really necessarily affecting your first or twelfth house, it still will be transiting where that where something important in your chart is Aries. So if even if it's your moon, it's going to transit your inner world. So you're going to be noticing maybe a big transformation in your inner world, the death of something, and then the growth of something new. I mean, this is all about the resurrection of, of, of individual self. You know what I mean? It could be complete upheavals in people's lives, but it's going to be so that new, something new can be, can be born out of it. Anyway, Aries, your hard work is paying off. Well, that's a good sign. This could be you. This is the center of the reading. The querent or the question. It's either about a fire sign or it's you. You're asking something about yourself. You may be working hard, but you're not seeing the results. You feel like you're probably not seeing the results, but it's paying off. You may be at some big transitory period in your life, or you may be working really hard on something specifically. It doesn't look like it's necessarily work. It looks more likely, I mean, it could be. It looks like it's probably reputation or you're standing in the world in some way, trying to move up or, or change in life. But you're not, you're not seeing, you feel like you're not seeing the results. Because you have another card here, you're not seeing it. The hard work is paying off, but you don't feel like you're seeing it. Same thing with the eclipse. The light is eclipsed, so it's kind of, blocked but it always once once it passes the light comes back you know behind you you may have left a, a home situation this is what's in your recent past you may have moved moved home you could have changed the dynamic of your of your family whether that be like a separation or uh, maybe a kid moved off to college or something like that but your family dynamic definitely changed recently because this is behind you or you're no longer having to focus on that. Or you don't feel like you're seeing this. This is what you don't feel like you're seeing anymore. You don't feel like it's the happy home with everybody smiling and having a good time and, and the white picket fence and all that. Maybe you're just, you, you feel like you've been working hard for that and you're just not seeing it. But your hard work is paying off. It's like there's been some kind of fighting, squabbling, arguing. This is coming and this is, this is with you right now. Okay, And like I said, um, if you are Aries Ascendant, and it is affecting your 12th house, um, you may find that you have some kind of hidden enemies. And it might not even be that, the, that you, you don't know the individual. It could be a secret enemy, but most likely it's somebody that you know, and you find out that either they were you know, talking behind your back or that they didn't have your best interest at heart or that something happened in your family situation that changed things, and now it's like this instead of the happy home that you once saw it as. And so now it's more of a, it feels like more of a struggle or a fight. But great strength is in your unconscious influence. So you, you're going to persevere. You're, you're staying strong. And as an Aries, Aries is the sign of war. I mean, that's Mars, right? Um, you're not going to back down. So it's, I think you're going to be fine either way. You may not be seeing the results right now. And it may feel like all this stuff is fighting against you, arguments, things like this. But you have all the strength that you need. And you're, and you're fighting through it because this is you right now. You feel whatever whatever this situation was that you that you feel like was holding you back or that you moved on from or that you haven't been able to see, 
you're still walking victoriously. You feel good about what you've done or, you've, or what you're going to do. Whether you're planning it or whether you've already done it. Whatever you've been working on, you feel good about it. Like a weight's been lifting off your shoulders kind of thing. This person feels good. Victorious. This is you right now in this situation. Now, this is what's in your environment. There may be a fire sign male in your environment. It also could be you, male or female, because you do have, we do have the Queen of Wands at the center of the reading. So this could be a fire sign male that's in your environment or in your orbit or just a fire sign in general, male or female. It also could be you. You're feeling like the king. You're feeling like you're in control again of your life. You're feeling like what you, what you want to do, you can do, or you feel passionate about what you can do. This is a very passionate, confident king. And that's a lot about what this mansion is about. And that's what a lot, I imagine a lot of what this this specific eclipse and the astrology around it is going to be about. It's going to be about self-confidence. Because Pisces is all about being passive and sacrifice and loss. Aries is the opposite. Aries is about going to get what's theirs and being confident. And that's where all the planets are at right now. Or damn near all of them. And the heavy concentration for the sun. And the sun is in the second decan of Aries. That is ruled by the sun. 19 degrees Aries is the second decan. You got 0 to 10 degrees is the first decan. Uh, 10 to 20 degrees, third, uh, second decan. Third decan is 20 to um, 30 degrees, right? And it's a 19 degrees, so it's the second decan of Aries, which is ruled by the sun. The sun is there. The sun wants to be there, and the sun is being reborn right now. So this is very powerful stuff. People born with the sun in that decan, specifically in the second decan, they can be famous, right? They can be very selfish, right? But these aren't people, even though they're, they're going to be very self-involved, um, they're great leaders. They can't really take orders from others. These aren't people that are going to be able to take orders from others. But they make great leaders either way because they're not going to send you in to do something that either they haven't already done or that they're about to do before you do it, right? These are very great leaders, and they're honest people. Even though they're self-absorbed, they're going to be very honest because the sun is exalted in Aries, right? So it's And the second decan is the sun rules, sun rules it. So people born with that are in a, like, if you're, Depending on what degree of Aries, right? If you're in between that uh, 10 to 20 degree Aries, you know, that's a great place for the sun. Okay, it depends on the rest of the chart, of course. If it's afflicted by Saturn and, and Pluto and Mars and all this other stuff, it's not going to appear that way. It's going to be an extremely selfish person that's probably really angry and doesn't care about anybody else. But on, a, on average, the sun wants to be there. And if it's, if it's well dignified, because it would be exalted there, this is an individual that's going to lead by example. And that's the best kind of leader. They're not going to be able to take... Or, uh, or, uh, uh, advice from anyone or anything like that, but they're not going to send anyone to do anything that they wouldn't do themselves or have already done. But anyway, so the sun likes to be there. And this is a rebirth right now. and this, So the, the sun's about to die and be reborn, just like what spring represents, just like what Christ represents, the story of the resurrection, which is through everything. You know, what do you think the Matrix is? That's just another Jesus story of a resurrection. What do you think Harry Potter is? He had to die at the end of it so then, and be resurrected so that he could defeat Voldemort. Again, you got the resurrection. It's what we're all trying to do right now. This is it. That's why I said spiritual growth. It can be exemplified right now. You can you can leaps and bounds. But there's a part of you, or, or all of you, has to die in a way, and then has to be reborn. And that's going to be different in the way that occurs for each of us, right? You almost have to be broken completely to be reborn. It's 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 extremely difficult, right? You have to completely be detached. To be able to come back as something new. You have to be completely out of yourself in all aspects, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually even. Great changes have to happen. And this is the time to do it. But anyway, looks like your, your hard work's paying off and you're feeling good. I went on a rant again. This is the advice. Speak your truth. Be honest. Be truthful. See clearly. Look at things for what they are. Not what someone says it is or what it, appear, or what it appears to be on the surface. People's actions are going to tell you a lot, right? People can... Words can be very dangerous. Futile even a lot of times. I mean, look how much I talk. But if you stick to your truth and you let the actions of the individual, not the words, guide what you do when it comes to that individual or whatever situation it is, you're going to be just fine. The outcome has the king of cups here. So I think this is you, most likely. Could be some of you dealing with a fire. So most likely it's you, feeling confident again, feeling strong. But the outcome is definitely something to do with either a water sign, male or female. But it's definitely a sweet individual. So 
this individual may be coming into your life. Water sign, most likely. And, it, and just because their sun sign isn't water doesn't mean they're not a watery sign. They could have so much in water and have even their sun, moon, and ascendant not be in water. And they could have just, you know, a stellium in water with the other planets and be heavy water. Right? Especially if the water is aspecting the sun, moon, or ascendant. Right? People put a lot of emphasis on the signs. And I'm telling you, it's the planets, the aspects. The aspects specifically are really the key to astrology. The aspects. Right? But yeah, and this could just be you as well. In another way, if, if, if it is a fire sign individual, not a water sign individual in your environment, or this could be an aspect, two aspects of you, because this is more of the emotional and sweet. This is more of the, you know, take charge, um, ambitious aspect of self, right? Like the more fiery, take charge, assertive. And this is more of like the sweet, nurturing aspect. And you could be, this is in your environment right now, who you have to be, and this is who you're going to end up being, a much sweeter, happier, well-adjusted individual because of whatever you've worked to change in your life. Whatever you worked in to change, you felt like you needed to change it, right? So, but if this is, a water sign individual or a watery individual, a sweet, nurturing type individual, male or female, they may be soon entering into your life. And who knows? It could be, um, it, maybe that's your spouse now. Or it could be someone that's entering into your life that's either going to help you in some way or that you end up getting involved with. It's hard to say. With the, with, with the court cards, they have so many different meanings. They can mean people for sure, but they can also um, represent specific uh, aspects like what the fire represents or what the air represents which is generally like thoughts you know water be emotions fire would just be your passion or your assertive na nature your action you know and then earth of course is the material aspects the comforts but anyway Aries that's all I have looks like your hard work is paying off keep doing what you're doing because if it's paying off and you're feeling like this you want to keep feeling better and the better you feel the better you feel here the more likely the world around you is going to reflect that same thing to you. You're going to get more and more situations that make you feel that way. And when you get in situations that, in general, don't make you feel that way, do your best to try to focus on what is good in your life or focus on what that is teaching you and spin it. Use your inner alchemy to spin it into something to a positive. Laugh if you can. Be like, oh, man, another, another thing happened. But it gives me a chance to show the universe that I'm not so easily... Um, distraught or give up too easily right and then you'll start realizing that not only are you happier more often just because even those situations that would normally make you angry or upset are, are now more of a uh you're looking at as more of a challenge in front areas that shouldn't be nothing it shouldn't be a thing at all y'all y'all take challenges head on you're a ram you take challenges head on no big deal you, th you can thrive on that and that's why a lot of areas are very successful um but if you can look at You'll look at a positive, you, you'll start getting more positive influences around you or situations that represent that to you. And not only that, when the other situations that don't necessarily represent that to you, you'll still be looking at it in a positive light anyway. And that just positive, 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 positive. So you get the inner alchemy of self changing as well as uh, altering the influences in the environment as well, as at least to what extent that you can. Anyway, Aries, that's all I have. Please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. Don't have to if you don't want to, but it's going to encourage me to make more content i'm trying to get more astrology videos out there but i just don't have time with everything i have to do with my life and doing the tarot videos and whatnot but i'm going to keep trying and keep and get i'll get a saturn video out here pretty soon about the first house in saturn um but either way i'm grateful that you're here and hope to see you here again happy super moon uh, uh new moon eclipse